The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Tanya, and I'm the marketing manager over here at Shuxoft Solutions, which is now part of the Great Tech Group. Just for those of you who are new with us today, our star solution MWF, which stands for Metal Wood Framer, is our Revit-based BIM framing solution that automates the creation of walls, floors, ceilings, and trusses in like H steel and also in wood. So today, however, our technician Aparna will be covering how to set up view templates for shop drawings. So this includes how to create a view template in Revit, how to adjust the visibility of objects, how to show grids, levels, and MEP elements, how to create filters, and also how to show linked models. So just before we get going, I'd like to remind everyone that at the end of the webinar, we'll be taking a couple of live questions. In order to be selected, please press the raise hand button on the dashboard. Just please also make sure that your mic is working correctly. If you'd prefer, you can also ask questions throughout the webinar by typing into the questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna hand off to Aparna now. Hi everyone, my name is Aparna Bhatia and uh, this week's webinar is about how to set up view templates uh, for shop drawings um, and basically within Revit. All right, so first thing we're gonna cover is how to create a view template in Revit. Um, and uh, before that, we need to know what a, we need to understand what a view template actually is. So uh, view template is basically a few settings that you set up for your views so that all of your um, panels um, and, uh, sorry, all of your views uh, have consistencies in them. So if in one view you're not showing MEP, in another view you will not show MEP as well. Like say if you're doing a floor plan or architectural floor plan, you kind of want everything to be consistent, right? That's basically what we're gonna try to achieve using view templates. So um, what we're gonna do is here we have a floor plan, which is uh, level one. Um, we can create a view template for this to match all of our floor plans uh, to be um, consistent. And in this floor plan, since this is an architectural floor plan, we probably don't need to see our panels. Um, and uh, maybe we don't even want to see all of these MEP elements here. Like you can see the piping going through uh, the panels here and stuff like that. Maybe we don't need to see that. Um, so for this uh, plan view, uh, we're going to set up a really quick view template. Um, first thing we're going to go and look at is our view range, okay? The view range is basically something that you can set up for uh, all of your views. So when you're setting up your view range, you have to specify your cut plane. So do you want to be able to see the, build, uh, the base uh, of your sill plate um, for your windows, or do you uh, want, to, want to not see them, right? So you can decide where your cut plane will be. Do you want them to, if your typical sill our bottom of sill is at three feet from level one. Do you want your cut plane to be at uh, four feet so you can see the sill uh, and then that and the fact that there's an opening there? Or would you like your uh, bottom to be or sorry, your cut plane to be uh, below the sill? So in our case, we're going to leave it at four feet because we do want to be able to see the sill plates of our windows and openings. Um, and then over here, you can specify the bottom. So typically, if you're doing a structural plan and you want to show your uh, floor framing underneath, uh, you will probably set this up to be negative uh, two feet or one foot, depending on the depth of your joists or your trusses. So I'm going to just set this to zero because I don't really want to show anything below as this is an architectural plan, okay? So we're going to set that up like that and just we'll just hit okay. So that's the first step. So first thing we need to make sure is our view region is accurate. The next thing we need to do is we need to check our discipline, okay? So if I set this discipline to be structural, you will uh, notice that some things uh, seem to disappear or uh, if you don't have any of your walls, say for example, this wall uh, was not checked on for structural, you'll notice that that wall disappears, right? So basically, it, uh, if you want to do a structural plan, that's typically when you would uh, use this uh, feature. You'll, you'd switch your discipline for your view to be structural. 
And the hidden lines for like your foundations and stuff like that will show up based on your discipline. So typically I like to set up my discipline to coordination. In coordination, you can see everything. So that's what I like to set it up as, okay? Um, the next thing uh, we're gonna look at is our visibility graphics override. This goes into our um, how to adjust the visibility of objects. That's what we're gonna uh, discover now, okay? So um, when we're clicking on visibility graphics overrides within our properties, um, here you can see all the different categories, model categories that we have in our projects. So now if I would like to um, turn off our MEP elements, um, I can go to the Revit links here. I can technically just turn off the Revit link, which is our MEP uh, model. Uh, and that should be good, right? So that's if we just want to get rid of our MEP, you'll notice all the little blue uh, ducts and stuff have been um, removed or not removed. They've just been hidden in this view. Um, the next thing we can do is we can go to model categories and say, well, technically this whole project, that this view is supposed to be architectural and structural only. So what I'm going to do is uncheck architectural and structural, select MEP um, and check all for MEP uh, and infrastructure um, and uncheck certain things. But when since I uncheck them, there are certain things we still want to show like walls, we might want to show rooms, we might want to show railings and stuff like that. We still want to see those elements. So I'll uncheck the other categories, uh, sorry, other disciplines and just check on architectural and structural and see which ones I want to keep on. Like detail items would be like your symbols for your slopes. Um, generic models would be uh, your mullions for your windows and stuff. You could turn those on. Uh, if you have any mechanical equipment that you want to show in your architectural plan or electrical uh, fixtures or equipment you want to show in your architectural plan, you could check those on as well. We probably don't need to see parking or planting because we are um, we don't uh, want to see that in our flow plan. Maybe we want, we definitely want to see ramps. We want to see railings not really roads, we don't really care about roads. Uh, roofs, yes, if we're doing a roof plan. Um, rooms, shaft openings, site elements, it's dependent on what you want to show. Um, typically the site uh, shows your base points and your um, internal origins. You don't really need to show that. Specialty equipment could be anything from like an elevator to a specialty escalator. Stairs you could show. Uh, we definitely want to see our columns, like our structural columns if we have any. Um, if you want to see your framing, you could show your framing too. If you're showing below the floor, make sure your framing is turned on. And then also structural connections, if you want to see the structural connections. Um, in our case, since we're doing an architectural plan, we probably don't care about the framing or the connections, um, unless you want to see where the anchor rods are placed. Okay, and in terms of the rest of them, they're fine. Uh, we also want to turn on our walls but I would like to turn off topography. I don't want to see the, the grass uh, and the roads that were created uh, in this project. All right, so that's uh, basically what we would like to do. So uh, our floors are set to 80% transparent if we need to see below them. If I don't, then I can just set this to clear overrides and it will clear up the transparency for it. And that's basically it. These are our settings we want to use for our architectural floor plan. Um, and then when it comes to annotation categories, uh, here you can enable and disable certain things like section marks. Uh, maybe we want to see, we don't want to see some elevation markers. Well, we can turn the elevation markers off. We don't want to see floor tags. Maybe we don't want to see uh, railing tags or room tags. Maybe we don't want to see those in this view. We could definitely turn those off. Um, you can turn off text notes to, uh, and uh, your, um, title blocks, your structural column tags, maybe you're using the same plan for structural and architectural um, or a duplicate of the plan for structural and architectural and you want to turn off either or uh, element, you can you have the option to do that, okay? Uh, right now, from here, we are not really going to turn anything off. We want to see everything that we have. Um, and you can also turn off your grids and your levels uh, from here as well in specific views. Analytical model categories is if you are exporting your model into uh, engineering software, you need to use analytical model categories for that purpose. Um, and then there is imported categories. Imported categories will show all of your CAD files 
or images that you've loaded into your project. And if there will be like a plus sign here and you can open up the plus sign and we'll show you all of your layers inside your CAD file. So if you wanted to turn specific ones off, you could definitely do that. Um, we don't have any CAD files here, so that's why nothing is showing. Um, and then you have filters, okay? So we'll work with filters in a little bit. I just wanna show you what this looks like. And within Revit links, we've turned off our MEP link model. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. It's pretty decent, uh, but I still don't wanna see these guys, right? I don't wanna, I wanna see structural columns. Like if there is a structural column that needs to be shown, I, I, will, I definitely wanna see that. Uh, but uh, I don't wanna see the framing right now because this is just an architectural plan. So the other thing I'm gonna set is I'm gonna go again, VV is the same way to access visibility graphics. So if I go to VV and I come here and I say, within filters, I want to uh, create a new filter. I already have one created here, but I'll delete that one and I'll recreate it. So we'll create one that's called MWF framing, for example. Okay, so MWF framing and uh, we'll select that. And over here, we're gonna pick our categories where we want, which, uh, for which we wanna apply it to. So we want it to apply to structural columns, uh, connections, oops, connections, and uh, framing, structural framing. So those are the three categories. So if I say hide unchecked, these are the three categories we're applying it to. Um, now we are going to add in BIMSF container. BIMSF container is a parameter that contains the value of our panel number. Um, so we can uh, save the MSF container, but we don't only want to hide our single layer panels. We also want to hide our multi-layer panels. So I'm gonna hit add rule. And within this, I am going to, uh, going to also add master container. So if you ever have uh, multi-layer panels, master container is how you know that uh, the panel is a multi-layer panel. So that master container field is populated, um, then uh, we wanna hide that element as well. Okay, so this uh, filter basically grabs all the elements that meet these two criteria or meet either this one or this one, okay? So we'll just hit okay for this. And now we're gonna add that uh, filter. So once we add that filter, we'll click on MWF framing, that's the one we created. Um, and uh, in here, we can basically, um, sorry, give me one second. So in here, we can basically uh, up, add um, or uncheck visibility, like we don't wanna see the elements that are captured by this filter basically, and we'll hit okay. And you'll see really quickly, all of our structural columns are gone, uh, and, or sorry, all of our framing is gone. But if I was to create a structural, let me go to structural column, and just say I actually had a rectangular, um, column going up to level two, and it was placed here, you'll notice that this column doesn't get, uh, doesn't disappear. Uh, and that is because we actually are, um, sorry, that is because we are actually, um, we, we only actually hit the MWF elements and not the structural uh, column uh, elements, right? So the structural column category is still uh, enabled, but since the MSF container and the master container values are empty, uh, it's still showing this element. But if I was to populate something like, hello, inside our um, master container, you'll notice that that disappears, okay? I'll just undo that and undo that. But that's basically how that filter functions. All right, um, so now that we know uh, how to, uh, we created a view that has, uh, those filters added and uh, everything is edited. I wanna make a view template out of this view. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to the view tab and within the view tab, we can go into view templates and then under view templates, it says create a template from current view. So we'll create a template from the current view and we'll call it architectural um, floor plan, okay? That's an architectural floor plan. Just because I created a template from this view does not mean that it's applied automatically. Um, and the other thing is, you can include uh, whatever categories you want to. So maybe say for example, just because uh, just in this view, I turned off the mechanical, doesn't mean I wanna turn off the mechanical in all views. I can uncheck Revit links 
and it will make sure that uh, ends up um, it will make sure that that Revit link is visible only in the views uh, that it needs to be visible in. Like you can control the Revit links that you want to turn on and off per view, even though the view template is applied. Right now, you can see the view template is applied to zero uh, views. Um, and then the uh, that so basically, if you didn't want to include it, uh, you can uncheck it. So it'll be different for every view that this template is applied to. Uh, the next thing uh, you want to do is uh, check your scale. If you want the scale to be the same for multiple views. Uh, that would be great. You can definitely uh, set this up to be a typical scale and include it. But if you want the scale to be different, you can always uh, like not include it and then have different scales for all of your plans. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually going to make it a uh, one is to 50 or uh, one quarter is equal to a foot. And I'm going to make sure it's included so that all my plans are going to be the same size um, on a sheet, basically. Okay. The only thing I don't like to include is our view range, because then I have the possibility or the flexibility to add this template to um, uh, to a roof plan. So I don't if the roof plan needs to be unlimited bottom because it needs to see all the roofs that are part of the uh, building. Uh, we will still be able to uh, do that. Okay. So um, that's basically it for that. So now what I can do is I can control select all the plans, or all the plans here, and then go where it says view template and apply the arc floor plan view template that we created, uh, but, uh, and hit okay. All right. So you'll notice uh, if I close this and close this and go WT, which is window tile, uh, all of our views are actually pretty uh, nice and consistent. Okay. So now say if I wanted to make any changes or I wanted to make a change saying that the walls um, over here, right, and uh, for this view template, I want the cut patterns for the walls to be uh, solid uh, and I wanted it to be red. And then uh, for the projection patterns, I wanted it to be solid and I want to be want it to be cyan, for example. So I'll hit OK and hit OK um, and hit OK. Since the same view template is applied to both of these views, you'll notice that it colored it red and uh, it uh, colored both of them red, even though I only did it in one, one plan. Uh, since that view template is applied to multiples, uh, that's how it is. And over here, if I click on the view template, it tells you it's now assigned to five views because that's what we just did. We assigned it to five different views, right? So um, that's how this, the view template for architectural plan works. Now, uh, we want to use this functionality uh, to uh, work with uh, MWF um, shop drawings, right? How are we supposed to do that? So if I go to my shop drawing here, um, if I go to my shop drawing here, you'll ignore this. Uh, deactivate. So basically, if I was to go to my shop drawing, you'll notice that uh, all of these are different scales and they kind of don't look uh, right. Um, maybe I wanted them to have specific colors um, and then, you know, kind of look a little more consistent. So if I wanted to do that, um, what I can do is I can actually go into uh, our shop drawing settings. So within, within our wall drawings manager, Wait a second, go into our shop drawing settings and within each view, so like we are going to show a 3D MEP view, um, within each view we have something called assigned view templates, right? So if uh, where it says assigned view templates, I can select a template that I've already pre-created. So in my, in my case, I have something called VT color or view template color for MWF so that it colors all my studs a specific uh, way. Um, and uh, I'm going to use that specific template. So all of the set, uh, settings specified under here, um, basically will, uh, all the settings specified under here will basically be ignored and it will just use the view template uh, that we've specified here, okay? So I'm just going to hit okay for that one. Um, and then I can just double click this uh, shop drawing template here. Uh, and I can see which views are being used. So we have a 3D MEP, 
we have a framing elevation, we have a framing floor plan, and then we have a framing colors, right? So um, we are going to go take a look at the framing elevation, go to view settings. Um, again, we're going to try to add that view template. So MWF, uh, MWF uh, VT color. So we'll hit okay for that. Um, and then MWF, uh, we'll go to the floor plan. Um, and then we'll go to MWF VT color here. Um, and we'll go take a look at that. Okay, so now that all my settings are set up, um, maybe say if I wanted to add my framing section, I could add that view template to that as well. So uh, now that all my framing set, uh, sections are set up, we'll hit close. Okay, uh, and now uh, I can either apply the view template to one of these views just to see what it looks like and then run the shop drawings again. Um, so let's go take a look at what the VT color looks like. So it actually increased the size of my plan, which is okay, or sorry, my elevation. Uh, and it's uh, showing me uh, my MEP elements, um, but it's not showing me my grids, but maybe that's because my grids might be uh, not inter intersecting the view or I've turned off my grids altogether. So let's unhide my grid. Oh, sorry, to deactivate view. Um, there you go. Um, so if I want to show my grids, I can actually go inside that view template and say, hey, you know what? Actually, we needed to show grids in this view. So let's go ahead and turn on our grids. And that's basically what it does. It turned on the grid, okay? So I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to show you what it looks like um, after I recreate the shop. So I'm going to, re I'm going to recreate the shop drawing. Now, uh, all of the views have that uh, view template assigned to it. Give it a quick second. Oops. Oh, okay. I guess I rotated them without knowing. Uh, but that's really fun. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, basically, now that we've created a shop drawing out of this, we can technically go to the shop drawing over here. And we can take a look at what is happening with our view. So for this uh, 3D view, um, since we kind of increased it and uh, we forgot to turn off the MEP, and this view is not really section boxed, uh, it looks uh, kind of like this. So what we could do is now that the view template is assigned, we can set it to none, or we can create a new view template that's just for that specific uh, panel, or sorry, just for a 3D view. So we can go VV and we can come to Revit links and turn that off. Um, and then if we wanted, we can just um, select this wall and uh, isolate it, right? So we'll deactivate it. and then located where it's supposed to go, okay? So this is something that ends up happening sometimes with view templates. And uh, remember how I was telling you about um, locking things to view, uh, like including things in the view template? Like in this case, we had uh, the view template to include the view scale. So all of your views are gonna be scaled the same way. So if we, un we do not include that and we then apply it to the um, 3D view, the plan view and the, uh, elevation view, uh, it will use the scale that you specified within uh, MWF uh, uh, shop drawing settings itself. All right, so um, here we can uncheck this, that's totally fine with us. Um, and then we can go into our shop drawing settings um, and we can come here um, and we can actually uh, set up our, oops, uh, we can actually set up our 3D MEP view to use it, but have the scale be maybe three eighths of an inch to a foot. That's the scale we want to use. Uh, maybe for the framing elevation, we are again using that same view template, but we are going to have it be half inch because that, that was correct. And even the floor plan, we want it to be half inch. 
So we'll just make sure those dimensions are set up properly here. And that's it, we'll hit okay, we'll hit close. Uh, and then we'll uh, also, one more thing I like to do is I want to turn off the Revit link. Um, yeah, turn off the Revit link, hit okay. So you'll notice that the MEP is gone, but I'll show you why I did that in a, real, uh, in a second, okay? So again, we are gonna go back and recreate that shop. So we'll come here. We'll go to MWF and recreate that shop drawing. And we'll hit OK. All right, so give that a quick second. Uh, it typically replaces the existing sheet and recreates it. So it takes a little bit. Oops, again. Um, so in this case, uh, what we would end up having to do is uh, having a different view template specifically just for the 3D view, or we just don't apply a view template for the 3D view. Um, and the reason this is happening is because we don't actually have a section box that's uh, applied to the 3D view, okay? So let me just do that in section box. Um, press at the wall, yeah. Uh, and then VX, so we'll do that. And that should be our 3D view, basically. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and now the benefit of your view template, uh, the reason I love using them, is basically if I come into any of the views, like if I come here and I say, okay, you know what, in all of the views, we now need to show our, um, we now need to show our um, grids. So we'll go to annotation, we can go to grids, and we can show our grids. Um, maybe we also want to show our MEP, so we can come and show our MEP model and hit OK. And in a matter of minutes, all the things are showing. And if you had multiple shop drawings created, you could see that these changes applied to all of uh, those uh, drawings instantaneously. OK. Um, all right. And I guess that's kind of it for today's webinar. Awesome, thank you, Aparna. Um, so we have a couple minutes if uh, anyone would like to ask a question. Um, just like to remind everyone that to pose a question live, uh, you just need to click on the hand icon in the control panel. Just please also make sure that your audio is working correctly. And um, just while we wait for any potential questions to come through, I uh, just want to remind everyone again that the recording of the presentation will be sent through tomorrow. As always, please feel free to share the recording with any colleagues. And um, if you're looking for it a little earlier, you can typically find it at the end of the day today across our social media channels. Okay, I'll just give it a couple of seconds. All right, well, that looks like it's a wrap for today. Um, if there are any questions after uh, we have closed the session, please feel free to get in touch with us. Our contact details uh, will be provided along with the recording tomorrow, as well as if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, um, we'd be happy to get that uh, we'll set up for you. All right, um, we'll now be ending the webinar. I just wanna say a big thank you to Parna and then also to everyone who registered. Have a great day, everyone.